Baldur's Gate 3 is one of those rare games that we don't come across too often. It's a world full of magic, lore, intricate world building, and most notably, morality choices. Yes, it is true that we've seen these features in other games before, titles like Hogwarts Legacy, Skyrim, and even Fallout, but never at the level of Baldur's Gate 3. In this game, every decision you make matters to the overall story, with the potential to alter the game in good or very bad ways. Baldur's Gate 3 changed gaming forever. It was a game deemed impossible to make, too complicated, too ambitious, and too time consuming. Yet, Larian Studios pulled off the impossible. But how on earth did they do that exactly? Why are game developers furious and triggered by this game? And how did a relatively small studio create a game that's not only the greatest game of all time, but one that has shaken the entire gaming industry? Well, to understand how Larian Studios achieved the unthinkable and how deep this iceberg really goes, we need to rewind back to 2016, where it all began. It's the year 2016, and games like Overwatch, Dark Souls 3, and Battlefield 1 were just being released to the public. Games were changing left and right, and at a rapid pace, and our beloved developers, Larian Studios, were just wrapping up with Divinity Original Sin 2, and they were planning on releasing this game in September of 2016 for Windows, and also in 2017 for other gaming consoles, which would become a huge success for RPG games. But now that their production was coming to a close, they were looking to start a new adventure for their team. But they wanted to do something that was usually gamed impossible, and that was making a Dungeons & Dragons game with actual good gameplay, graphics, choices, and more. But unfortunately, something like this was very risky and cost a lot of money. And I mean a lot of money. And if they were going to make an actual good RPG game that would generate a lot of cash, they would need to find a game IP that already has an established fan base, which would make it easier for them to bring in players. In one series, and a story they loved dearly, just like many other fans, was the Baldur's Gate universe. Baldur's Gate was a beloved game series and was played by many players throughout the years. But given the current age of video games, the Baldur's Gate series was just not properly suited for the current times. And when you look at the most recent release of Baldur's Gate, it looked like this. Oh, and by the way, Siege of the Dragon Spear came out in March of 2016. And even though this game was meant to bridge the gap between the first two Baldur's Gate games, which came out in 1998, and the sequel in 2000, this gap game was not well received by fans of the series at all, and did not live up to the impact of the past. Fans still loved the Baldur's Gate stories, of course, but the future of Baldur's Gate games were really on ice. But after Siege of Dragonspear came out, Larian Studios saw an opportunity that was sitting on top of a gold mine. And because of their high hopes for DOS 2 coming out later that year, Larian wanted to breathe fresh air into the Baldur's Gate stories and to evolve what a D&D experience can truly be for a video game. But before they could even start, they needed to get permission from Wizards of the Coast, the owners of Baldur's Gate. And let me tell you, this was no easy feat. Wizards of the Coast would not budge one bit, and Larian Studios was rejected multiple times. And sadly, this sequel for the series was starting to become more and more unattainable. And because games were changing so much and the interest of players, making a third Baldur's Gate game was just not worth the cost and risks for Wizards of the Coast, especially after their not so successful Baldur's Gate game that came out earlier that year. But when DOS 2 finally came out, the game did spectacular and was a huge success for Learning Studios. And the game was so good that it was well received by the entire gaming community, being labeled as a great RPG experience. And because of the success of DOS 2, Wizards of the Coast noticed 
and seemed to have a change of heart. And so, by the end of 2016, Wizards of the Coast reached out to Larian and asked if they wanted to make Baldur's Gate 3 for them. And since Larian Studios was such a huge fan, they of course said yes to this proposal. And so, the deal was sealed. And in the beginning of 2017, Larian Studios was announced to be the developers of Baldur's Gate 3. Now that the deal has been set, Larian Studios will be moving on to the planning stages and how they are going to approach such a big project. And this was something that really stumped them at first. They needed to first focus on creating a rough draft for the story. And when creating a story, one thing that everyone always messes up on is not focusing on the characters. The characters you meet in movies, shows, or even video games is what makes those worlds so exciting and interesting. Yes, we can argue that the world is important and also the narrative, but it's the people you meet along the way that makes those places more fun. I mean, some great examples of stories with great characters are Star Wars, Marvel, Game of Thrones, Harry Potter, and even One Piece. All of these stories have great characters, which makes the world more exciting. And the stories for these narratives are actually quite simple and not too complex. But because they have so many great characters and lore and background history and different personalities between all these different people, it makes those narratives and worlds look like they actually have a lot of depth to the the story. When traits and characters like Astarian, Karlak, and even Gale, they wanted to give them all different personalities. That way the player can choose which character they want to have in their journey and to make it more exciting. And each one of these characters would have their own backstory and lore and tragic event that happened to them. For example, Astarian is that sassy character who is really mean and also likes to get you into trouble a lot. Gale is that guy best friend that everyone always wished they had in real life and it's just a fun dive to be around is super nice. And Karlak is that person who gets the party started and gets everyone hyped at a party or in a battle. Each one of these characters have completely different personalities from one another, making them all unique and interesting with their own backstories and lore. And when they come together, they all just complement each other, making it even more exciting than it was before. Especially when creating the villains. Cuthred Thorm is a great example of this. Larian created a villain that is supposed to be calm and strong in his approach. Always seeming like he was one step ahead of everyone. And he was a character that you had no idea on how he would react to certain situations, making him so terrified. But every character you meet doesn't just have a personality, but a backstory that you can learn about in the game. But once you get these main important NPCs written down, you can then start with the actual story and how each of these different characters would interact on their adventure together. And the adventure was definitely going to be something that was amazing and grand, that players will come to love for many years. The story had to be something that players would be able to experience in their own way. A narrative where there are multiple different halves that lead to a variety of endings. That way, each player has a completely different experience from their friends. And this is quite the challenge actually because the developers really need to think about how players would navigate themselves throughout their journey. Larian Studios needed to create the basic part of the story, and what they did was, they had Mind Flayers in the Absolute to be the main antagonists of the game, having the Mind Flayers in fact the main characters, giving them a connection to the main baddie of the story. And players must stop the Absolute and its chosen from destroying all of Baldur's Gate, so a pretty basic story when you think about it. But there is actually a bigger problem coming Larian's way, and that's creating player agency. Now what the heck is that exactly? Well, player agency is about giving players the interactivity to affect and change the game world, and decisions that can have major consequences for the rest of the story. And the thing about that is, this isn't something that is very easy to accomplish, and it's why most gaming developers try to stay as far away from this as possible, mainly because of the difficulty of performing this correctly, but also because of how long it takes. They would have to think of multiple different choices that players would want to make along their journey. And when you are a game developer who is making player agency in your game, you have to keep asking yourself questions like, what if the player did this? Or wanted to do that? And for Lernian, this was something that they need to honor because of the agreement they made with the owners. In fact, 
Larian Studios needed to make a game that actually felt like a Dungeons and Dragons experience, but also something that felt like player choices actually mattered throughout the story. And interestingly enough, there are only four main endings that Larian Studios decided to add in Baldur's Gate 3. And that's if you don't include Gale blowing himself up and destroying the entire world. But there are thousands of different ways these four endings can go. There was also a news article that came out a month before the game was released in 2023, discussing how there are 17,000 different endings to the game. And this statement they made was actually very misleading and not correct. What they meant by 17,000 different endings is that there are multiple different variations of those four endings. And the best part about this game is that all the side quests tie back into the main story of the game, which is amazing. But one feature that is really satisfying and just brings the game to life even more are the companion reactions to specific decisions you make or when you are interacting with other characters or objects. Depending on the choices you make with your companions and where you are with their arc story, each one of your companions will have different interests and thoughts on what you should do. Even reacting poorly if you do something completely differently than what they wanted to do. But something else that Larian Insidious was going to have to keep in mind was implementing the D&D rules, especially the 5th edition ones. And this was challenging because they had to faithfully adapt the complex, flexible rules into an actual digital format. Larian Insidious had to build an entire new game engine that would be able to handle into Kent Mechanics dynamic storytelling and vast player choices, all while balancing the legacy of the original Baldur's Gate games with modern expectations. But because Larian Insidious was trying to accomplish so many things, they actually had to upgrade all of their softwares and to try new technology that really hasn't been done before. And let's be honest, this is really difficult and quite the problem. To create Baldur's Gate 3, they had to develop new AI systems and software tools, including the intricate narrative branching, character interactions, and dynamic combat systems. Larian upgraded their Divinity 4.0 engine, integrating the improved AI for NPC behavior and expanding the engine's capacity to handle complex dialogue trees and decision-making processes. These technological enhancements were so crucial for making this game feel more alive and responsive to player choices. And this game had to impress Baldur's Game fans and also the D&D fans as a video game. So the pressure coming from both sides was becoming more and more apparent and overwhelming. In fact, Larian added AI tracking recognition for their actors' movements and speeches. That way, they can actually have good cinematics and dialogues to the game. And cinematics were something that Larian Studios has never done before, and they had to create movie scenes for every story decision you made in the game. And when they finished up with all the scenes, they ended up with 174 hours of cinematic scenes. Goodness gracious, is that a lot? In fact, they had to have dialogue voices for every time he spoke with the NPCs and for every decision you made or choice you made with NPCs. And I can just imagine their PC engines sounding like an airplane that's about to take off because of all the storage space filling up. And if they were going to make this game feel authentic and real for players, they also needed to add voice actors that could bring these characters to life. And let me tell you, these actors killed it for this game. We had Amelia Tyler as the narrator, Devorah Wilde as Lizelle, Jennifer English as Shadowheart, and Neil Newborn as the Starian, who was the fan favorite and also personally my favorite character as well. But there were so many other talented actors that brought this world to life. Larian Studios was even able to bring in Matt Mercer, Maggie Robertson, Jason Isaacs, and J.K. Simmons. And good freaking grief is that lineup crazy. I mean, when you look at that cast, you know the cinematics and the battle scenes are going to be spectacular. But the time has been ticking down fast, and it's already been three years of building this game now. And Wizards of the Coast were becoming more and more impatient because they already had a ton of money spent into this game so far. And they wanted Warian to finish up with the production and to start getting this game out for testing with the players. And so Larian Studios released the early access on October 6th of 2020. And when the players got their hands on this game, they hated it. Like, they really hated it. 
The game was filled with glitches and bugs every 5 seconds, and all that hard work that Larian Studios put into this game wasn't able to be seen properly in the gameplay and cinematics. Boulder's Gate 3 was also not complete really. Players only had access to Act 1 and that the creators barely touched to the surface of the mechanics and story. And surprisingly, a lot of players hated Shadowheart at first. Her character was annoying and her sass level was at 100% sassiness. She would disapprove of every decision you made in this story and it would make horrible and mean comments about every little thing you did. Her character was just a burden to be around and nobody wanted her in the party. But after all the feedback from players, it was back to the drawing boards and Larian Studios started looking over all the technical issues again. After a few years of looking over all of the player issues with this game and fixing up and polishing areas that needed to be repaired, their pencils needed to be put down and a project had to be turned in. And so the game was released to the public on August 3rd of 2023. And when the game came out, it was silent and the creators were checking their Reddit pages every five seconds to see what was going on. And then all of a sudden, people started going nuts over this game. Baldur's Gate 3 was everything players could ever ask for. It literally hit the jackpot on what a game should be. And people just couldn't get enough of this game. Baldur's Gate 3 was being praised everywhere you looked online, and for good reason. In fact, this game was so good that it won 32 awards and was the game of the year. And the funniest part about this whole thing is that the only reason that I played this game was because of word of mouth. You seriously couldn't even get away from this game. Everyone was talking about it. At school, to work, to just walking around the grocery stores, and even when you got together during family gatherings at Thanksgiving. But what exactly made this game so popular? Why did people go out and buy this game immediately when it was first released? And why was this game talked about so much? One of the main reasons why is because of the world. The world in Baldur's Gate 3 is massive, with hidden areas around every corner. One time when I was playing this game and trying to figure out on how I would destroy these goblins for the millionth time, I stumbled into the basement of a house. And my character rolled an inspection check and I noticed that the wall was able to be destroyed and so I used thunder wave to take down the wall and when I went in there I found a whole other world called the Underdark. There was already plenty to do on the surface level of Act 1, and now there is an entire basement underneath the main part of Act 1, but that's exactly how a world should be made, where the map just surprises you with more places and hidden dungeons. There are three acts to this game, and each one of these acts has hidden areas where the game just surprises you multiple times and you just get completely lost. Act 1 took me about 50 hours to complete just because of the story, fighting, and getting to know characters. And the other acts are just as long. And this is exactly what I expected from a single player video game, where my money feels like it was well spent. In fact, I also loved every single character in this game. You literally grow so attached to these NPCs that they actually feel like real people with different opinions and interests. I personally had Will, Gale, and Astarian a part of my band, and I made my journey feel like it was a group of guy friends on an adventure together. But I actually found it quite difficult to decide who would go into battle with me, mainly because I just love all of these characters, and I feel horrible when I don't bring one of them with me. They're all special and unique, and having their comments on certain situations is just great. But another thing that makes Baldur's Gate 3 so good is the combat. I just love the turn-based fighting in this game, and how you can strategically think about how you want to approach each battle. When I first got into this game, I thought I was going to hate it because of the RPG element, but after I went through a few battles and I got to the main land of this game, I started falling in love with this game very quickly. The gameplay was a blast, and it never really felt repetitive, mainly because of the variety of enemies, the AI system,
system being smart and how fun it is to use your special moves. The game gives you many classes to choose from in this game, so each class has different abilities that are useful in their own way, making the combat feel very, very unique and special to each player. And I also loved how you can command your troops or your companions and you can strategically plan how you're going to approach each battle, which really made it fun. But even the choices in Baldur's Gate 3 are just bonkers. The amount of options you have for how you want to approach the story just seems limitless. You really can become the person you really want to be in this narrative. In other video games, they kind of just choose who you are or they create the illusion of you having choices. But in reality, reality, the decisions you make don't really affect the game story at all. Whereas in Baldur's Gate 3, a choice you make in Act 1 will always be remembered until the very ending of the game. Other NPCs will even look at you poorly if you did something wrong, even going to the point of not trusting you. And you can even miss a ton of side quests in Act 1, which would change everything when you get to Act 3. So this game is really screening to players to replay the game over and over again and to just live different experiences with the characters. But even after all of the positivity from fans and players, why were there so many game developers who hated this game? Well, it's actually because of Larian exposing them for their laziness in creating video games. Larian Studios went above and beyond for this game, and they took their time making Baldur's Gate 3. Thwen, the CEO of Larian Studios even mentioned how planning before making the game is crucial to starting the development, and many people actually skip over this step. They just rush it, which is why you get a lot of unfinished games like Starfield and Cyberpunk. But another reason is because this game sets very high expectations for future games coming out, and so game developers are worried that players are now going to expect high performance games like Baldur's Gate 3 and that simpler games would not do as well in the marketplace. And this honestly woke a lot of people up to this. Larian Studios showcased that if you take your time and make a good game, players will play it and the game will be very profitable. But what does the future of Baldur's Gate look like? Will there be any DLC or Baldur's Gate 4? Well, unfortunately, no. Larian Studios was looking into making some DLCs, but then stopped production because they really didn't want to anymore. Their main reason for not wanting to continue this game is because they wanted to focus on other projects that they really wanted to do, and to start a new adventure for their team. And I can completely understand them, because they've been working on this game for six years, and we only got to experience this game for a short while. Imagine going into work every day and the only thing you can think about is Baldur's Gate 3. Now, if you love it, it's gonna be great, right? But after a while, you're kind of gonna get tired and you want to do something else. And that's exactly how Larian Studios felt. And so they wanted to pass that torch onto another game developer who really loves Baldur's Gate. But looking back at this amazing game, Larian Studios loved it. And this was truly a masterpiece. One of the greatest video games of all time. But it it was time to move on to the next adventure. Baldur's Gate 3 is something to remember and is a significant moment in our history and definitely earns its spot among games that have changed the gaming world. I love this game and I still play this game till this day and I plan on running more adventures with my friends and by myself, discovering new stories that I haven't really seen before. Baldur's Gate 3 is a game that should have been impossible to make until it wasn't. But thank you all for watching, I really do appreciate your time. If this type of content interests you, make sure to subscribe because I have some other video game documentaries that are in the works at the moment and are going to be crazy when they come up, so I'm really excited to share that with all of you. I also have a Discord where I post updates on my work and also you can just chat with me there if that interests you. But thank you again, that's pretty much it, and uh, my next video comes out... Uh...